afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, thank you so much for joining uh, this webinar. Um, it is my great pleasure to um, introduce Dr. Christina Stefan, the Director of the Institute of Global Health Equity Research at the University of Global Health Equity in Rwanda. Um, Dr. Stefan obtained her MD in Romania, followed by master's degrees in pediatrics and oncology in South Africa, a master's in cancer epidemiology from the UK, and a PhD in medical education, and an MBA from France. Um, Christina is providing uh, leadership and developing the next generation of global health and oncology scientists um, at the University of Global Health Equity and really is having quite an impact on, on um, training and research um, in Africa and the world. Um, she's a member of honor of the Academy of Medical Science in Romania and of the Academy of Science of South Africa and the Royal Society of Science in South Africa. And notably, she's the first woman elected president of the African Organization for Research and Training in Cancer and was voted as the most influential African woman in business and government um, in 2016. Uh, Dr. Stefan, in 2022 this year, received the most prestigious um, award for women in cancer research from the International Agency for Research in Cancer. Um, she has comprehensive experience in teaching, not just at UGHE, um, but in South Africa and um, really throughout um, Sub-Saharan and, and Northern Africa, um, and is a faculty member of the International Agency for Research in um, Cancer, as well as a couple of other professional um, institutions. Her publishing record is vast, um, comprising more than 125 peer-reviewed um, published articles, and she has also um, edited and authored four books, um, including Cancer Research and Clinical Trials in Developing Countries, A Practical Guide. Um, Dr. Stefan's um, very enthusiastic about developing uh, young medical researchers, um, having mentored um, students really from multiple places in Europe and um, uh, South Africa. And lastly, she's the founder of the African Medical Research and Innovation Institute and African Cancer Institute, and continues to work as an advisor to ministers of health in different countries and a consultant for WHO as an expert in childhood cancer, cervical cancer, breast cancer, as well as on national cancer control plans, health systems, and policies. So it is a total pleasure to um, welcome uh, Christina to the webinar um, and to hear about the soon-to-be-launched um, Institute for sorry, I get the, the uh, prepositions right, Institute of Global Health Equity um, Research at the University of Global Health Equity in Rwanda. Um, a quick note that this session will be recorded um, and also that you should feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel um, for the departmental seminars. It's HMS, Department of Global Health and Social Medicine. And lastly, that um, the Q&A feature in Zoom is enabled, and you should feel free to an answer any questions um, in that, uh, in that uh, module, and we will um, cover them toward, at the end of Dr. Stefan's presentation. Thanks so much for joining us today, Christina. So uh, good afternoon, and thank you so much, Carol, for the kind introduction, as well as for the invitation to be here uh, today with you. Um, it seems like uh, I've been just studying all my life. <laughs> it sounds like that. Um, I'm really happy to be here with you. Even if I cannot be physically in Boston, I will be coming to Boston only next week. Uh, but definitely to reconnect with uh, old colleagues and friends and uh, as well to make new ones. I'm going to talk over the next uh, half an hour or so, 25 minutes, 30 minutes about the Institute of Global Health Equity Research. And I'm convinced that most of you, uh, you heard, uh, if not visited already Rwanda, Kigali, you came to the Butaro campus and um, uh, you did experience our, I would say unique university, University of Global Health Equity placed uh, in really strategic uh, position in the rural um, community, uh, really in the village. Um, the title of uh, my talk today is Global Health and of course equity because this is what defines us. 
and what makes us so different, I would say, uh, compared to the others, really unique. And I'm going to talk about us, uh, global health, equity, and us in the context of uh, Africa. And of course, I'm sure you would like to know who uh, we are, uh, who are the team, uh, who is the team, who are the members, really, uh, the colleagues, the researchers who are part of the Institute. And I'm going to share with you the vision, the mission, a little bit about our teaching and research platform, some of the achievements to date uh, since I started, and, uh, since I joined the Institute. And I think the most important would be really future plans and how uh, we could really start working uh, closer or more uh, together in the near future. So after your really <laughs> quite large and uh, really kind introduction, uh, I would summarize my work in basically two slides. And this is the journey um, in global health starting many years ago, maybe I shouldn't say how many years ago, more than 30 years ago when I qualified as a medical doctor and immediately after that I moved to South Africa, which became a home uh, for me and from where I, start, I started working in uh, many African countries, more than 30 African countries, more than 30 years. I had a short break uh, moving to Switzerland where I was leading the global oncology, this time really for looking for innovative uh, solutions for uh, diagnosis for low mid income countries. And then again, it seems that um, uh, I really wanted to know more the world and really uh, understand better. Um, and I moved to Asia and this time I worked in about 18 um, Asian countries, Asia Pacific. Uh, with a special interest in Southeast Asia. It didn't last too long because I decided to come back home, home to Africa, and here we are uh, in uh, Butaro, back in uh, Rwanda in Eastern uh, Africa. I have to share with you um, one uh, memory, and this is related to uh, a special day, which was a special day for me 12 years ago when I was invited um, at National Cancer Institute at NCI to give a talk. And it was a memorable day because it was uh, soon after the uh, launch of the International Affairs Office. And then the talk that I gave at that moment in time was fighting cancer in Africa. And it was again a provocative um, talk um, asking why Africa and why now. And I was sharing with the audience at that moment in time, the African continent, as you all know it, and those blue dots represented the places where at that moment in time I was working. In the meantime, I managed to add some more uh, blue dots on the map as well. So this is how I started my journey in global health, even if I didn't really define it as global health. For me, it was mainly global oncology. So this is how it started. And I know that um, we still perhaps don't agree on a definition of global oncology, but working in many countries and doing many things, um, either research or teaching or community, uh, it was all included in what I call global oncology. And lastly, adding to the global oncology or global health term, I wanted to add the term equity. And then this is again a photo which I took many years ago. Um, and actually this photo, this picture uh, stuck with me for many, many years. I keep on remembering from time to time. Uh, that was during a visit to Ethiopia, to Addis. And you might recognize Black Lion Hospital. That was many years ago. I was invited to teach and to do academic board rounds. And um, this is the father of a child with uh, Burkitt lymphoma who kept following me and uh, the local pediatrician asking us, begging us not giving up on this child. And of course, all of you, you would know that Burkitt lymphoma is one of the most, I would say, treatable um, childhood cancer diseases that in the United States, um, I think the rate is not 90%, could be even higher than that 95% or so, while in Africa still at times, um, the survival could be quite low. And at that moment in time, um, I was determined really to 
look into ways in which we could uh, make a difference and where really the place of birth of children shouldn't really determine their way, um, the their outcome of, uh, of their disease. But let's move back to um, our institute and to our university. And uh, again, who are we? And uh, you will see that University of Global Health Equity is a new university, a new university in Rwanda. And of course, I mean, that is everything by comparison. It's a new university compared to many other universities. Uh, it is already seven years old. And um, uh, the objective is really to build the next generation of global health professionals. But I would say not just building the next generation into leaders and change makers, but by the way of how it does it, the principles and the way of how this teaching uh, takes place, the uh, ethics um, and the way of how students are emerged uh, into the community and into the equity concepts and principles from day one. Uh, when they start their medical uh, studies. And of course, for those who haven't been, I couldn't resist the temptation to share with you at least this picture. Uh, this is our beautiful Butaro campus. We are adding even more. Um, it is, as you can see, surrounded by hills and um, uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, places. And very close to us is... Uh, uh, the Ugandan border. So if you haven't come, uh, this is also an invitation to you, please join. And I think it's really worth coming and experiencing uh, the life of the students and not only of the students, really of the faculty uh, who spends most of their time uh, with the students and really uh, in the community. So um, let me talk a little bit about the Institute of Global Health Equity Research, IGHR. So if anyone would ask me, how do I define this institute in just a few words, I thought what describes us the best would be research, innovation, impact, and then equity. And of course, as any institute of research, um, we have as vision to train the next generation of top class researchers in Africa, but not only uh, training is on one side and on the other side is definitely to produce what we call impactful and innovative research, but then again through the special lens of uh, equity, so producing the research which will address the needs of community and also will contribute to reduce the health inequalities. Um, this uh, slide doesn't really bring any justice. I mean, there are a few of the colleagues who are um, presented in this slide. You are going to, I'm going to share with you at the end um, a shorter video with, uh, with the team members, but I wanted to share it with you and also the two visiting fellows that we have. And more importantly, to talk for a few seconds about the funders Andrew and Bonnie Wise that you can see on this side of the slide. Um, Andrew, who uh, has as a background, he's a health, uh, he's an economist, um, really considered one brilliant mind uh, with many citations in his uh, field, somebody who is really passionate. Uh, just as much as uh, Bonnie. And every single time when uh, we talk to them, they are really interested in uh, looking for solutions to alleviate suffering. So the Institute was funded by them. Uh, they live in Boston and they have many other um, uh, charities and uh, interested really in research and science in um, health economics as well. And um, um, we are really extremely um, fortunate to have them as our uh, as our funders. Um, faculty, I uh, uh, will talk about them and I will share uh, a short video as I mentioned and then you are going to um, perhaps understand what are the reasons for some of them to really join the Institute and what they would like to uh, to achieve. 
I thought before uh, moving further uh, to share with you some of the achievements to date. Again, this is a picture from Butaro campus. Um, the Institute was uh, funded two years ago, but unfortunately, like many other institutions, hit a difficult time with the pandemic. Um, the initial director, um, a colleague of psychologist from Australia had even more challenges as he never came to Africa. So obviously with the pandemic, um, he tried his best and he really tried to, to understand as much as he could the situation and put you know, the foundation uh, of what needed to happen next. So we consider that basically we started to take off this year. So this is explaining why the launch is now. Um, as we really uh, started to redesign in the last, I would say, eight, nine months, redesign and create a vision of the Institute. Uh, we uh, looked at our values, the mission, the objectives of the Institute. Um, also, as achievements to date, I could say that um, we did a survey to the faculty to understand the needs and the gaps and the main area of interest, because obviously the Institute serves as a support to the entire university. So it's not only us, but encouraging any researcher from um, UGHE to take part. And it was important for us to understand um, the needs and the gaps uh, in order to be able to make a wise choice on our first priorities. Um, we started also to have a research repository initiative, but more than just collecting numbers, grants and projects and publication, we decided to have uh, an interesting repository uh, research ideas, really with sometimes we call them crazy ideas, really innovative ideas, but ideas which could really have a great uh, impact, um, ideas which could start changing the way of how in general healthcare is delivered, uh, training is offered and how access is at reach or provided by the poorest. Um, we organize a research day at the university and we are actually planning another one for next year with uh, uh, broader participation, also international participation, uh, quiz and knowledge promoting research among our master students, we started our research training for the medical students. We teach research actually from the first year. Also as achievements to date, we started a journal club with um, uh, NIH uh, with involvement of the faculty and also an invitation to all our colleagues at PIH. And uh, of course we needed time to learn all the other <clears throat> departments at the university from nursing to executive education, to anthropolo anthropology, to clinical science. Um, as I believe it was really important for us to understand their strategy and uh, their needs. And from our point of view to see ways in which we could um, collaborate and um, work together. What else have we done? Uh, we introduced um, visiting international fellowship program, uh, which seems extremely popular. We had many applicants, many fellows, and you will see already we have two fellows, a uh, Chinese colleague from Geneva, uh, who is with us for three months. We have a fellow from United States. It is an extremely popular, uh, popular program from medical students, um, just like yesterday, a young um, uh, medical student, second year student with parents born in Rwanda, herself being born in United States, reached out to us and said, I want to come. I want to, you know, work and learn with my colleagues. I would like to do a project. So it, it is really a very popular program. Of course, it's not only for medical students or fellows. We have visiting researchers, visiting scientists, adjunct faculty, uh, professors, and so on. We also introduce a guest speaker monthly program with interesting topics and great scientists as 
uh, obviously we have the desire to learn more uh, from the others. We increased our member, uh, our MOUs, uh, Memorandum of Understanding with several other institutions from UK to Switzerland, from Harvard to Princeton, and of course, to the local ones in Africa um, where we have most of our partners. And then again, in this last few months, uh, the very small team at the Institute managed already to apply for four grants and two others are in preparations and the whole times maybe <laughs> we will be able to, <laughs> to, to get them. If not, at least I think it's a good experience as we learn more and uh, we could definitely become successful in the near future. And of course I left towards the end our collaboration with PIH that uh, I think it's extremely important, it's tremendous. Um, our interest in working with all the PIH sites because we see the Institute, the IGHR, as a connector, as a connector, if you want, within Africa, but not only within Africa, the entire world as well. So this is why we started even discussions with our colleagues from Haiti, and most probably we are going to reach um, out soon to Mexico and um, and Peru. Of course, at the end of these few months, uh, could we have done more? There is always, um, I think, essential to stop at times and reflect and perhaps, you know, analyze and prioritize. Um, but I think, you know, as we continue to grow and learn, um, we needed time. We needed time to know each other. We needed time to create a safe environment. Um, I really wanted the, each and every single member to be able to talk openly, to be free to express himself or herself without really the fear of being judged or criticized because it's not wrong or right. It's really how can we work together, brainstorm and how um, we can have a collective decision and a collective input. Um, perhaps one thing that I need to mention as many ideas are just coming from my, uh, from my mind, mentorship. Mentorship for the younger generation is just very, very high uh, on the agenda for us. All right, so let me continue and um, um, share with you our values. Again, it was uh, um, a collective uh, decision we identified as uh, being inclusive, as being innovative, as being determined, as being understanding, and of course, um, through the lens of equity-based, it's what actually, you know, is uh, characteristic for, uh, for us. So let me share with you uh, some of the strategic uh, plan. Um, we have embarked, we believe that we have embarked on a journey to become Africa's leading Institute of Global Health Equity Research, uh, recognized in the world, I would say not only in Africa, for our innovative approach for togetherness, impact, and inclusivity. And I think something that, again, is specific to us is the fact that our narrative connects our people to our institution. Um, and again, if you think about the institution, you need to think about young or very young members, uh, very young researchers, um, but also vibrant, also uh, energetic, energetic researchers who do have um, great moral values, uh, but also they have inquisitive minds. And uh, I really believe that the scientific curiosity will lead to ambitious discovery again in the service of health equity. So as you can see here, the best research uh, that we can do is to talk to people. And I think this is exactly what we do. So the Institute has the African community in the center. So everything that we do is with the patient and actually not to the patient, 
with the African uh, community, because sometimes we do uh, research not really on a patient, uh, but has the African community in the center. From a certain point of view, you can see that the Institute is um, at the crossroads advancing on one side, um, and you might be surprised, high precision medicine research and training the next generation of top class researchers in Africa, but also surrounded by um, research within or in the community. So if I just describe quickly the research training platform, um, as the name says, uh, it's really to continue investing in training and development of students, young generation of students, of masters, PhD, postdoc, researchers. And the research training, the planning of the research training is also to include new knowledge. So when I talk about new knowledge, I'm talking about um, immunology, computational biology, uh, perhaps expertise in data science, um, competency in population studies. So making sure that we prepare the scientists to meet the challenges of today, but also more important of tomorrow's needs, something that I'm very interested in uh, related to anticipation medicine and research. On the other side, you see the research platform. We believe that the, the platform of any research, you will need data, good data, as well as samples. So this is why you will see there a biobank. This is uh, something that we are also very interested. We have the community on one side and we have really science and discovery uh, on the other side. It is really the time to understand better uh, the African patient's response to the disease and their treatment. So obviously collection of the sample will help us uh, in the future. And of course, uh, genomics, um, as we know um, that at the moment, there is a very small percentage of Africans who do have the genomic profile um, really analyzed. And we believe that um, um, a future genomic uh, center will bring a lot of uh, value. Clinical charts um, unit that was really one of the desires of the funders and we weren't really sure in the beginning but uh, there is an urgent need to increase clinical charts in Africa. I mean as you all know from 2%, 2.5% around there clinical trials rate in Africa for a burden of what, close to 70%. Um, we really need these clinical trials and we need really to modernize our thinking and to adapt it, designing trials for the community um, and make it uh, better in terms of um, um, uh, trials available in community settings where patients could come uh, and could be encouraged to, to participate and also to uh, take advantage of the state of art therapies. Um, and then not lastly, African Cancer Alliance um, with a desire of having a cancer research and innovation hub for Africa, calling it a meeting where the patients uh, live. And um, I don't need really to give all the details why it will be important only by the fact that we work so closely with Butaro, which is the cancer center and is a center of excellence and wants to become a cancer center of excellence and the referral center for the country. But obviously with the idea of accelerating progress and also addressing um, equity in uh, cancer care and reducing disparities in um, Africa. And digital technology research innovation, um, we believe is an essential component in the view of the need for us or for Africa really to own uh, its narrative. Uh, we need to adapt innovation to the local context 
and also to the stakeholders to ensure that policies and the practices are developed within the greater awareness of the local context. context. Um, this slide basically uh, represents the platform research and the one PIH research that we really very much support, the precision medicine that we discussed, uh, and on the other side, the community engagement and uh, digital health innovation technology. We, the Institute of Global Health Equity Research uh, functions as a support platform, as I mentioned, towards the entire university, towards the entire UGHE. Um, this is what I would call work in progress. We don't have yet the health economists or really an office uh, a grant writer. We are trying to recruit one. It's really not easy, uh, but this is a bigger picture, this is why I call it work in progress, because this is the desire to really have all those skilled um, and expertise within the Institute so we could support um, all other researchers uh, at UGHE and why not at any other PIH center that would like to, to conduct uh, research. Um, very <clears throat> shortly about the training platform, obviously being an institute uh, within a university, um, we uh, provide training, teaching and training. And um, you will see on this slide, uh, the teaching 2022-2023 for MGHD, so ma the Master in Global Health Delivery, practicum and data lab, and obviously for the medical uh, students, as I said, from first year introduction to research methods. We have a quite comprehensive training again with the pillars that are presented on this slide. I'm not going to go through each and every one of them. Um, you will recognize building capacity, obviously in research methodology, integrity, grant writing, again, something that um, it's quite important for us, data analysis, dissemination of findings and knowledge uh, translation. Um, I had to share with you a research grant snapshot since uh, last year. Again, it's not only for the Institute, it's the entire university. There were 47 grants submitted, a huge amount of money. Uh, we were successful on 22, and we are uh, hoping that at least out of those pending decision, at least uh, another percentage would be also successful. So, uh, uh, one of the objectives is really to try to improve on our success rate for grant application. And this is just a slide with some research grants we submitted, some grants in preparation and awarded grants. We discussed about uh, future focus areas uh, because since we are talking about PIH, we needed to really understand better the general context and this is why uh, in this slide, you will see uh, clinical trials remain the same, digital technology remains the same, but you will see more onto implementation science as well, uh, working with our colleagues at the hospital. We have now a partnership with health systems with the colleagues at Harvard at the School of Public Health, and of course the interest in big data biobank and then associated with the population health. And again, this is a map <laughs> with our uh, collaborators. Um, as you can see, perhaps not all in Africa are represented here. We do have some in uh, Europe, from Norway, UK, France, Switzerland. We go as far as Asia to Japan, but no doubt, again, I should have had maybe just US with all the universities. I think this is where most of our collaboration uh, is, and uh, we are very happy for, for uh, working together with our colleagues from, uh, uh, from US. And uh, as I'm almost uh, closing my presentation, hopefully I was on time and not talking too fast. <laughs> I'm so excited and I want to share so, so much with you because it's really a lot happening for a small team. Um, I just don't want to miss the opportunity to invite you all to um, the official launch of our institute it will be next week, actually Thursday from two o'clock. 
And uh, I'm specifying now not only Harvard Security Club, but with the address, uh, it's a beautiful location. I've been there, the president's house. Uh, so uh, the launch, official launch in Boston will take place there. And I can also share with you that uh, we have a ex Nobel Prize laureate who will be the keynote lecturer talking about really how are the health decision making uh, how are the households in low mid income countries taking uh, health decisions? So I think it will be an interesting uh, lecture, as well as a panel discussing, um, I would say, maybe the homework that we have from the funders looking for the most um, innovative or the most effective cost interventions, cost effective interventions to reduce. Uh, to alleviate suffering. Um, so it will be a panel, obviously, with interesting uh, uh, panelists with, um, um, and I'm expecting really um, a tremendous discussion around this uh, topic. And um, the faculty uh, that I'm going to present, um, it will be a short, um, a video of six minutes and uh, basically in this way you'll be able to to meet uh, some of the colleagues who are working for the institute and let's hope this is going to work the institute of global health equity research is part of the university of global health equity based in Butaro, Rwanda. As a pediatric oncologist, my main task for more than 20, 25 years was to treat children with cancer. One of the most emotionally challenging, but also rewarding careers that anyone in this world could dream of. What made me join the Institute is that- Now, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I don't think we can see the video. I, I am not able to. We're hearing the audio, but I don't see the video. Well, that is bad. <laughs> um, let me try again. Do you see now? The no, I think you might have to reshare your screen now. It's so right right now we're just we we don't see your screen at all. Um, okay, let's see. of global health no, equity research not is yet. part of the University of Global Health. Yeah, um, I think it is a pity. Um, I don't know exactly if this is going to work. This is encouraging. <laughs> you might just need to maximize your screen now and then I think we're good. Do you see? Yeah. Can you just max? Yeah, perfect. Based in Butaro, Rwanda. As a pediatric oncologist, my main task for more than 20, 25 years was to treat children with cancer. One of the most emotionally challenging, but also rewarding careers that anyone in this world could dream of. What made me join the Institute is that I saw this as an opportunity for growth 
not only for myself, but also for the next generation of African researchers. My reasons for joining uh, the Institute of Global Health Equity, in fact, the interest dates back to 2019 when I first visited uh, Rwanda. So I thought this is, uh, the Institute actually offers the, a venue for more collaborations to bring in research funding and to help train the scientists from Rwanda and within to address issues of global health. Before joining UJC, I worked as a medical doctor in both rural and urban hospitals here in Rwanda. I noticed some undocumented challenges due to lack of equitable research in all health aspects. For instance, we used to rely on evidence generated by others in our daily practices because very few clinical trials take place on the continent, yet Africa represents the most diverse genome in the world, and this leaves many health issues unaddressed. That prompted me to join IJHR to contribute to health research for equity. My goals in life are to conduct meaningful research projects and to improve health equity for my patients. When I came to Luanda for the first time, I was looking for a host institution to support my research permit application. Given the prestigious status of the University of Global Health Equity, it was the ideal institution. In fact, it turned out to be more than ideal. The IGHER has an international team full of talent and expertise in global health research and a strong network in the health system of Rwanda. I'm a fellow at IGHER. I was first made aware of the Institute's work through the University of Global Health Equity and then through a fellowship that I received, I was able to come as a visiting fellow. Joining team here was an easy choice for me as it presented the opportunity to work with and learn from passionate leaders from across Africa for a project that actually mattered to me. Well, here I'll be working to identify barriers in accessing cancer screening and diagnoses uh, and thinking about potential solutions. IGHR focuses on conducting research and second component is training. So um, joining an institution that combines both research and training um, is an opportunity for me to liberate that. I joined the Institute of Research because I was curious as to how research can contribute in eradicating health inequities in Rwanda, in Africa, and in the world. For me, global health was born through global oncology, love and care, empathy, and sharing protocols so much needed on the continent. The commitment and passion and of partnerships and collaboration on the continent, which was so much and is so much supported uh, and encouraged by many in all parts of the world. The Institute of Global Health Equity Research is also about bringing the best scientists in Africa and also unite them with the best scientists and researchers in the world. Why? To focus on some of the most critical problems in the world. And it is also to be able to produce the evidence so much needed for transformation and change. The research I plan to do when visiting the IGHER is part of my doctoral project to study the impact of social health insurance on incentives of healthcare providers in East Africa. So what I really bring to the Institute is my experience. I have trained various students at undergraduate and master's level and have been successful in many competitive uh, funding opportunities. In terms of um, focus on research, I would like to see uh, more re researchers focusing on uh, both uh, infectious as well as non-communicable diseases, which has been in the rising over the last uh, decades. And in terms of research gaps, I see three important research gaps. One is translation of uh, research into policy and action. I think we lack that in Africa. IGHR is pioneering in terms of conducting information science research training in Rwanda setting researchers in Africa. For a young female scientist in the field of research, which is predominantly filled with uh, male scientists, let me tell you something. Science is not only for men. You can do better and you have everything to take. I personally used to doubt myself in science because some people used to doubt me. But one day I told myself, if others can, why not me?
but since then I had to stand up and see where I am now and stay growing day after day. There are many challenges and inequities we're facing in the world today that I believe as an institute, we can challenge ourselves in creating solutions for today and tomorrow. And I'm very confident that we will be able to do this. We will be able to shift the center of gravity for Africans by making sure that our trainings are tailored towards addressing the equity challenges that we face as Africans. As one of my great influencers, Nelson Mandela said, education is the best tool, weapon to transform the world. Our institute is advancing well on the mission of training and forming the next generation of researchers, scientists, women researchers and scientists, health leaders who will stand on our shoulders and see a broader horizon for all. So, I am ending with this and uh, thank you so much for your attention. I'm really very proud of the team and uh, I am really looking forward working together with you and uh, many colleagues who would like to come and join us uh, at the Institute. Thanks so much, Christina, um, for sharing all of the really impressive accomplishments for the Institute in the in the in a, in a short period and also the video um, reinforces what's clearly a, a special institution. Um, I want to uh, invite the attendees to share any questions um, in the question and answer part of the platform. And I guess just um, while waiting for those entries, I'd, I'd like to um, raise a question. I, I've, I've have, I didn't uh, include kind of the personal part of the introduction when I, when I um, opened the seminar and I've just had the pleasure of meeting Christine over the last few months, a couple of times in person and really enjoyed our chats and, and trying to think about how, um, how the Institute can really stand out as um, promoting equity in research and, and thinking about the the tensions that sometimes emerge in thinking in, for example, clinical trials or um, other kinds of non sort of delivery, non implementation research. Um, and knowing that it, the Institute and the university are housed in PIH and are really committed to the values of PIH as well. And I'm wondering if you could speak a little bit more about how what are the equity standards? How are they enforced or imposed? Or and and how do you balance that with um, creating an environment that allows innovation and and autonomy for researchers who would be affiliated with the institute? I think this is a great question, and I wish to have a very simple answer. I think we were also lucky, um, in a sense, that we really spent enough time. Um, knowing each other and building trust. Uh, and uh, this helped us a lot in a way in which we could really express our interests, our views, um, the type of research that we would like to do and the way of how we would like to work together. Obviously, there is always the challenge that, you know, while you work in a smaller team, it makes it a little bit easier while you come into a bigger ecosystem or in a bigger, um, let's say, uh, a group where on one side you have a university, from another point of view, you have a PIH, which is an NGO, sometimes the interest might be different. Um, I think we were, again, very fortunate because we share the same principle and we try to meet, you know, halfway. And we decided instead of going with one agenda or with certain priorities, why don't we sit all together and see where we are fully aligned and go together as a team. And perhaps one of these examples uh, could be related to the fact that we um, um, decided to merge the teaching and training, which was done at PIH Rwanda with what we were doing. And we thought, okay, the best way it would be for us to come together instead of complement each other than to have two different types of modules or courses. 
And then again, we uh, apply the same type of exercise from the PH point of view. What are your priorities, research questions? Why is this important? Why it is important to us? And where can we really uh, meet halfway? And um, you might or might not be surprised, but there, there is and there was a lot of synergy. So we complement each other very well. And this is why even when we choose to discuss about the strategy and we look at the survey of the faculty, you know, those topics were rated the highest. And it was exactly the same type uh, with PIH. Now, obviously, the next step, um, as we were discussing uh, even today, is how can we bring the other PIH centers, let's say from Africa, like uh, I know you've been working in Lesotho, they do already clinical trials, how can we learn from them? How can we um, you know, use the, their expertise and their experience to really build our own clinical trials? I mean, obviously that's HIV, TB, I think that's their main focus for us would be oncology, but not only oncology, because obviously we do have HIV patients and so on, but really how can we learn from the others, but also innovate and come up with new ideas in terms of clinical trials, for example, clinical trials done in the community. And we are lucky uh, she's not here, she's not in the video, but we just have appointed a new uh, clinical trials unit head. She comes from Kenya with a number of years of experience and um, we are really looking forward to, to move into that direction as well. Talking to our colleagues, for example, in Sierra Leone, uh, child and maternal health were top of priorities. Again, Saj that you saw, the young researcher, two of them are actually NIH fellows who have a partnership with NIH. So each year we send one young uh, colleague for a year to NIH to learn. We sent three already from us, and now we sent one from PIH uh, as a group. Um, so she has um, a special interest in child and maternal health. So I think that would really bring us even closer together. Great. Thanks, Christina. Um, I, I guess an, another question, just knowing that there are some of my colleagues from the department who are social scientists um, with expertise in history and social science, and and then also some more quantitative researchers on the among the participants today. Could you just say a little bit more about the range of opportunities for collaboration, how we can be supportive of the efforts of the institute? Um, again, I think um, uh, there is great opportunity for social science as well. I've been talking to we have a, a department of so social sciences. Uh, one of our colleagues is an anthropologist. So obviously anthropology is an important field. Uh, so there is a place to look into this type of social de determinants and uh, uh, from anthropology point of view. So it's not only reserved to MDs. I mean, you, you did see we have only two medical doctors. We have uh, epidemiologists. We have, you know, um, a diverse group of uh, experts. And um, we would definitely like to be able to expand our research areas into, let's say, maybe the non-traditional, non-clinical, not non-traditional, but non-clinical um, areas that um, up to now we, we have conducted um, research. Thanks, Christina. There um, any any questions? If people want to be unmuted, we can do that if it's easier for you to ask verbally or just uh, put a question in the chat and we can, un in the, sorry, in the Q&A and we can unmute you. Um, I have one other question. Uh, you, you had mentioned um, community engagement and really having the community, the African community in the center of several of your your images. Are there formal mechanisms for community engagement with the research? Are there community advisory boards? Is that an area that the Institute is looking to develop? Yes, so we have a dedicated center for community engagement. Actually, there are a number of them. So one at the level of the university, uh, which is actually led by one of the PIH colleagues, <laughs> interestingly enough. Uh, so she's really the link 
um, with the community and we do have advisory boards for the community. We have engagement with the community in a sense that we have different projects such as, um, for example, young teenage um, pregnant women who will need to be skilled in different jobs or in different uh, areas of expertise and we offer those skills as well. So the involvement in the community goes all the way. Uh, recently, it was organized uh, during the research day, also a course of photography, and that was organized by the community, by those who were involved with this young mothers, part of the awareness, part of the training, part of um, the educational programs. So um, this is, I would say, one of the major areas uh, that you would see happening at the level of the university as well as uh, of the Institute. Great, thanks, Christina. And there is, uh, <laughs> so there's a question about registering for the launch of the um, Institute. Is registration required? Is there a link we can share with attendees? Yeah, there is a link. So registration is required and is required only for, if you want catering purposes for those who are coming, you know, physically there because um, um, we have a limitation at 60 people okay um, um, and um, the launch will be followed by a reception so obviously from the catering point of view is important to know and also virtually to have the link to for the registration so i can share um, i don't know if i have now the um, the link but um, we have advertised it um, quite broadly um, the link for the for the registration. Yeah, and if not, we can um, send it afterwards um, to the uh, to the attendees. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe that would be <laughs> uh, because obviously when you look for something exactly in the moment. And there there, there is one other one other question that has just come in. Um, commending, commending your success so far on grants. I also was really impressed by that, uh, that uh, success rate. Um, and uh, the question is, what sorts of funding mechanisms or which funding mechanisms are the most promising for um, research in African institutions? Um, again, I think. Um... We have uh, a number of uh, grants application. I did not share really the names of the PIs. They are usually the more senior ones that try to, you know, get to those grants that they have more experience. So we are going really for the NIH grants, <laughs> NCI grants, uh, MRC grants as well, mm -hmm. uh, European grants such as uh, the German ones. Um, and um, obviously we try to work within a consortium. So most of the grants um, perhaps are not always led by us, uh, but we are part of the consortium and then we take uh, uh, turns. So we have really an active participation at all those uh, grants. And I think that some of them substantial, I did not really include the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. And so, so, so for now it's it, the, the mechanisms or the funders have been kind of, if you will, traditional academic research funding agencies so far. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. To the, that's... Calls, to the normal calls for applications. Yeah. 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 And okay. some of them for pharma as well, but not as many to pharma, mainly to the funding agencies. Okay. Yeah. And it, there may be interesting. I think there was one Gates. I noticed one Gates one mentioned as well. Yeah. Um, and then one last question before we wrap up um, is really about the the vision for the institute and the kind of infrastructure required, lab space, other other facilities that would be needed, and where does that fit in the future of the development of the institute? And I guess also, also grant related question. The question, and we are talking now to the funders, and we had a discussion with them even yesterday. So the plan is really to have uh, the institute. The initial plan was uh, at Masaka um, and to have the institute like the infrastructure, the physical building and uh, next to it to have a lab, to have some offices, uh, open space for visitors as well, an auditorium for, for classes, virtual classes. 
and next to it to have also a biobank. And the plan is to expand, to add as the time goes by um, and as we grow uh, bigger. There is a discussion as well to have some uh, facility in terms of a research center at Butaro campus. Uh, because if we talk about a clinical trial unit, it will make much more sense to have the unit attached to the hospital and maybe also a smaller biobank there as we do the strengthening of the lab uh, infrastructure as well. So watch the space. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Those sound like very exciting developments and um, a lot of potential for expansion in the future. So Christina, thank you so much for sharing this um, introduction of the Institute of Global Health Equity Research with us. Um, we're really excited to find opportunities to, to collaborate between the department and, and, and the Institute and um, look forward to hearing more in the future. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much for having me and I uh, uh, am waiting for all of you back in Butaro and in Kigali. Great. Thank you. And thanks, Amy, so much for helping us uh, set it all up. Thank all right. You. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Okay.